the chances are you are subconsciously well aware of Tom Caron's work. He's designed things as varied as the Reliant Scimitar GTE, famed for being Princess Anne's favourite car, the 1970s design cult classic The Bond Bug, the children's game Du Jour in the 1970s, the Kiddiecraft Marble Run, the ever-reliable Bush TR-130 transistor radio, even Luke Skywalker's land speeder craft for the 1970s Star Wars films. But perhaps the design that Tom Caron is most famous for is the Rally Chopper, the bike that every kid in Britain wanted for Christmas in the mid-1970s. Sadly, Tom Caron passed away on the 2nd of January 2023, and around the world people have been paying tribute to his incredible designs and the work of the company that he directed for over 35 years, Ogle Design. But no one has picked up on the fact that Tom Caron was the only high-profile British designer to ever design a touring caravan. And this wasn't just any old touring caravan. It was what Caravans International dubbed the Caravan of the Future when it launched in 1969. Despite being a fairly substantial commercial flop, it features many design details that are commonplace in the caravan industry today, and also, in its failure, cemented the caravan industry's stance to never try anything too progressive ever again. This then is the story of the 1969 Eccles Amethyst. Eccles rose to prominence in the 1920s, making them one of Britain's very first proprietary caravan builders, founded in 1919. They were founded by Bill Riley and set up factory in Sturchley in Birmingham. Eccles were such pioneers in the caravanning industry that promotional trips were organised to simply tow one of their caravans around the streets to make people aware that such a vehicle known as a caravan even existed. By the 1950s they'd cemented themselves as Britain's largest caravan manufacturer with a very successful range of caravans that was sold the world over. Sadly, things came crashing down for them in 1960 with the sudden and unexpected death of owner Bill Riley's son. The Eccles brand was very promptly sold to Sam Alper, a young, free-thinking entrepreneur who'd founded Sprite Caravans barely a decade before. It was a shocking turn of events as Sprite manufactured cheap, simple, lightweight caravans and Eccles had a well-earned reputation for high quality, modern, sleek designs. At the turn of the 1960s, the Eccles brand represented the old guard somewhat. The caravans were elegant and well-built, but no longer represented the pinnacle of modern design that they once did. Sam Alper identified that this was Eccles' unique selling point, and a drastic new design was unveiled in late 1962. The new trapezoid-shaped Eccles even came with a bay window, but the interior was about as modern but stylishly classy as you could get at the time. Though not an instant sales success, good reviews soon followed from the caravanning press, and this new era of Eccles caravans began to sell well as the 1960s progressed. With the design approaching eight years old in 1969, Sam Alper, now at the helm of the collective group of caravan manufacturers known as Caravans International, decided that the Eccles brand needed something really drastic to push them forward into the 1970s and beyond. It wasn't just that though. Eccles's rivals from the earliest days of caravan manufacturer, namely Winchester and Car Cruiser, had failed to survive the 1960s, and 1969 would be Eccles's 50th anniversary making them the longest surviving caravan manufacturer in the world at that point. This is when Sam Alper approached Ogle Design and met Tom Caron. The brief was simple. Tom would design the caravan of the future and Sam would try and make it happen. These rare original sketches show a caravan that can be used on land and water. But interestingly, feature the design details that will be applied to the likes of the Reliant Scimitar GTE and the Bond Bug, namely the squared off front and rear panels and the rising coach lines. It was a good starting point, and Ogle worked with Caravans International to make this Eccles a reality. 
It was the first caravan for decades that was all new from the ground up. So jaws were understandably on the floor when it was unveiled to the caravanning public at the caravan show in December 1969. The new Eccles Amethyst immediately looked like nothing else on the road. The squared off design allowed a far greater interior room than conventional caravans, but fears were raised about the effects on towing performance. The trick up the Eccles' sleeve was that the internal floor dropped between the chassis members to decrease the overall height of the caravan while maintaining normal interior height. This was made possible by the unusual so-called half chassis, which stopped at the axle and the rear half of the body was held up via a complex internal roof structure. The exterior front and rear panels used ABS plastic, which hadn't yet been done in the caravan industry. These vac form panels were easier and quicker to produce than the traditional fiberglass ones, which had to be handcrafted in a mould. The roof was curved in all directions to allow rainwater to drain off, and the roof was coated in a flexible nylon-backed PVC. The side walls were also curved to not only give the caravan better aerodynamics, but also improve the towing performance and make the shell stronger. Another novel idea was incorporated into the structure in a fully adjustable internal ventilation system. This allowed the air to move freely around the inside of the caravan and reduce condensation on the single glazed glass windows. Also of note on the outside was the absence of gas bottles on the towing frame. The Eccles Amethyst moved them to a locker above the axle to improve loading, reduce nose weight, but also keep the exterior of the caravan looking tidy. Inside, the Eccles Amethyst was adorned with the usual contemporary interior that people began to expect from the caravan's international-owned Eccles brand. From the use of light for mica work surfaces to cleverly thought-out storage solutions, the Eccles was a caravan designed for serious hardy caravanners. Other pioneering features included the fitment of a fully waterproof washroom to allow the use of a portable shower in there. Again, just about every British caravan today comes fitted with a shower, but the Eccles was pretty much unique in 1969 for coming with one as standard. Other standard fittings, which were slightly unusual for the time, were 12 volt lighting when the vast majority of caravans still used gas lamps, and also a fitted water pump. The Eccles even swapped the standard single glazed glass windows for toughened safety glass. The Eccles literature stated, go and buy an amethyst now. The Joneses will never forgive you. The caravanning press loved it, remarking on its ease of towing, quality finish, and small little touches that impressed her the hardy caravanners of the time, such as curtains that came with a generous gather on them. How times have changed. But how did the caravan buying public react to it? Sadly, not very favorably. Despite the radical new design, it proved to be too much of a step into the future for most. But who better to explain what happened to the Eccles Amethyst than static caravan designer Carl Olsen and Sam Alper himself. Several years ago, a caravan was done for Caravans International, which used quite a number of modern ideas in terms of having a uh, sunken level floor to get the overall height of the vehicle down. Mm. It used colored surfaces and radii on all the cabinetries. And there was enormous uh, resistance to this in the marketplace, and it didn't sell. At one point, we went to quite a sophisticated shape. In fact, it wasn't really very successful. A number of reasons, I think. One, it really was a bit expensive. It wasn't sufficiently traditional and it looked bulky. And I don't think that it's very easy to design that sort of modern shape that doesn't look bulky. And the model that replaced this so-called modern design uh, was totally reactionary and went back to the upside down boat roof detail that's been with the caravan trade for 30, 40 years. And this replacement van has been an enormous commercial success. 
Despite Tom Caron's bold new futuristic caravan design that had so many obvious design merits, it failed to sell well. Caravans International had enough confidence in it to offer a slightly altered version badged as the Fairhome 425 to act as the pinnacle of the Fairhome range, which was the top level range that Caravans International offered at the time. Though older style Fairhome models continued to be offered alongside it. The entire Eccles range would embrace Tom Caron's design for 1971, but quickly costs were cut wherever possible to cheapen down the new expensive Eccles caravan, and only then would sales start to increase. For 1971, it now had a full-length conventional steel chassis, and the whole body had to be remade to increase interior height. It also quickly lost its curved sidewalls too, as these were more time-consuming and costly to build. By late 1974, the Eccles had been considerably toned down, though it still bore a striking resemblance to Tom Caron's vision. But as the model continued to sell poorly, a radical redesign followed for 1976 to return the Eccles to a traditional looking model with a boat shaped roof, which ironically went on to be one of Britain's best selling touring caravans. Ogle the 1969 Eccles Amethyst, as designed by Tom Caron, remains a fascinating design relic from an era in which, without computer guidance, anything was possible. It was brought from paper to production by a charismatic company owner who was a hardy caravanner himself, and Sam Alper knew the strengths of his product. He would speak in later years of the triumphs of that Eccles design, but express his frustration in the public's lack of enthusiasm to embrace it. The caravan industry has arguably never been the same again, with mainstream conventional caravans now being designed by the accounts team to create something that just resembles everything else. Gone is the individuality and the daring to be different that this Eccles represented, but it's also completely understandable given the caravan buying public's reaction to it at the time. Much like the squareness of Tom Caron's 1970s car designs and the rising coach lines towards the back, which are prominent on pretty much all cars designed the world over today, this Eccles features so many things that paved the way for the next 50 years of caravan design. We must thank Tom Caron and his team at Ogle Design for attempting to drag the caravan industry kicking and screaming into the 21st century. It turns out that he was right about most of this design, but as usual, he was just too far ahead of his time. Mm -hmm.